What's up everyone, my name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer and today I'm going to show you how to design tab components in Figma in accordance with Google's material design guidelines. At the end of this video, you'll have a set of components like the ones you see here on the right. If you're not familiar, tabs are used on both desktops and mobile devices to allow navigations between groups of content that are typically related to each other at some level of hierarchy. Tabs come in sets and they distinguish sections of content from each other, whether it's chapters in a book, different genres of music, or even sections of an application. If you want to get more context on this, I recommend going to Google's material design website where you can learn more about placement, fixed tabs versus scrolling tabs, etc. And you can even play with an interactive demo. Tabs can either have an icon and text, just an icon or it's text. And then at the bottom of an active tab, there is a colored bar that so that section is active. To get started, the first thing I'm going to do is type item one. I'm going to change this font to just be a pro. You can really change this to whatever font you want. It's just the one I've been using. Let's set this to semi-bold and we're gonna change the weight of this to 14. We're gonna change the height to 20. Then I'm going to zoom in a bit here. And then for the active state, we're gonna just be that primary purple. And for the inactive tab, we're going to have this be that gray. I'm going to duplicate this once and then I'm going to type the word heart and then I am going to type font awesome pro so this is a font library i'm using that automatically creates icons based on text that you type in i will change this to be that primary and then i'll again have it down here and this will be inactive you don't have to worry about spacing too much at this point i'm just getting the basics laid out now i've got the three different tab types that i'll have i'm going to apply auto layout to these then I'm gonna create a frame for this. I'll create a frame for this. Apply auto layout here and then frame it, frame it, frame it. And the minimum width that these need to be is actually 90 pixels. So I'm gonna change this pixel width to 90. I'm gonna change the height to 48. And then I will do the same thing for these. Set this to 90, set this to 48. And then I am going to take this and I'm going to center it. And then I will set the constraints to center. And I'm gonna do that for all of these. I'm gonna call this active, I'll call this inactive. You'll notice that this is gonna break when I create components out of all of these, but I'm gonna add the different properties later. So now I've got three sections. The last thing I need to do is take this and also make it 90 pixels wide. And then I'm gonna center this and again, have it be centered both the top and bottom. And then I'm gonna have this be horizontal and vertically centered. Then I'm gonna center this. I'm gonna set this to horizontal and vertical center. And then the one last thing I need to do is rather than this being 48 pixels high, this is actually supposed to be 72 pixels high. So you can see I've got a little bit taller component for these two. I am going to take all of these three and then I am going to have them align at the top and then distribute the horizontal spacing, change that to 40, and then do the same thing here. So that's align these to the top and then change the horizontal spacing to 40. Let's give this a little bit more spacing too. And then I'm gonna select all of these and I am going to create a component set. One thing that I forgot to do here is add that divider at the bottom. So let's go to stroke and we're going to change this to be that primary. And then rather than it being all the way around, I'm going to click on this little box here and I'm going to go to bottom. So that way it only lines to the bottom. And you can see if I resize this, it will both stay centered and the line will take up the entire width of the element. I'm gonna change this to active and then I'm gonna select all of these and say true. I'm gonna select all of these and say false. But you can see that that breaks because there's multiple instances of this. So I'm gonna add two more properties. One is icon and let's have that say true by default. So any of the ones that have icons, that is a true, but for this one, that's false. One more that we need to add is text. So let's have this say true and then we'll create a property. And then for these, since they don't have text, this is false. And then you can see that error message that said these properties contain values that are conflicting goes away once I make that change. Now, if I take this and push it up here, I am going to change this to inactive. I'm gonna add an icon if I remove the text. You can see that I get a lot of flexibility and control in terms of easily being able to configure this to whatever I need it to be. And that's it. You now have tab components that you can use in both mobile and desktop designs, whether you're laying out different chapters in a book or anything else that has separate categories that you need to get through. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of tab components, how to create them, and how to use them in your next project, whether you're working on a mobile or desktop application. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.